Welcome to the weekly devotion from Beautiful Savior Church in Las Vegas. And welcome to what appears to be the beginning of a new stage in the effort to get a handle on, control of, and God willing, even to eradicate this coronavirus pandemic that has caused so much change and consternation in our lives. We're not quite sure where we stand in our struggle what new openings will be allowed, what new restrictions might be instituted, or exactly what the next weeks are going to look like in our homes, um, our lives, our community, or even in our church. But it does seem that we are moving forward, doesn't it? And to me, that means that it would be a good time for us to thank the Lord for bringing us this far through the first appearance of the virus among us. Far more often than I care to admit, I forget to thank God for the blessings I receive from Him every day. All too often, it's not until our evening dinner when Christine and I have our daily family devotion and we get to that part in the Lord's Prayer where we pray, give us this day our daily bread, It's only then that I remember that God did it again. Even without my asking, He provided me and the family with everything, everything I need to make it safely, securely, and well-fed through another day. And that happened in the midst of a pandemic. Our God is gracious and good. The goodness, grace, and mercy of our Savior God is the only thing that brings anyone through another day. That's true for us who put our trust in God as our Lord and Savior. And it's true for those who worship someone or something else as God. And it's true even for those who worship no God at all. No one on this earth can make it through one more day without the blessings of the God who showers his creation with daily bread. How could I be like those 10 lepers whom Jesus healed of their horrifying disease, and then like the nine, forget to even thank God for all the blessings he has showered on me? Like the one leper, I need to return to God often and regularly to thank him. I can't think of a better way to consider the gratitude I owe to God for his favor than the words of Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. With these words, I not only get to praise God, but I get to begin to recount the specific blessings I have received this day. I have the assurance again that my sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ my Savior. I have been kept again from diseases that threaten many of which I'm not even aware. I have the opportunity again to recall that God has graciously redeemed me from slavery to to the devil and, and to sin, and that one more day he has showered me with his love and compassion. Once again, God gives me everything I need to live and live well, safely, and securely in the middle of a world where sin causes so many things to go wrong. David helps me remember that it's not just me or my family or you and your family who have been so favored by God. This is the way God has been forever. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, uh, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. More than 700 years before David lived, Moses and the people of Israel wondered who this God was who promised to lead them from Egypt to the Promised Land. 
they asked God to tell them who he was. God answered them by telling them what he was known for. David quotes those 700 year old words that the Lord spoke here. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, uh, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Isn't it amazing to think that this description of God meant so much to God's people that 700 years uh, after they were first spoken, a faithful child of God like David could recite God's descriptive name word for word? Isn't it amazing that 3,000 years after the time of David, faithful children of God like you and me can hear or read these same words and understand them and praise God for revealing himself to us even today? God takes care of me. He takes care of you because he loves me and you. God is not angry with you because in love he sent you a savior to satisfy his righteous anger over your sins. These words remind us of the depth and breadth and the height and width of God's love for us. It goes far, far beyond the goods and services, the daily bread of physical life and physical needs. He has taken care of it all. He has forgiven our sins and thus made everything, everything, right between us and him again. David can't help being amazed either. <laughs> he goes on, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Things are right between us and the God who protects, provides, and cares for us every day only because God ended our separation from him by sending his son into our world. He sent our lowly, humble brother to us to live and die and rise again for our sake. Our sins are gone. What we could no, not do for ourselves in a million lifetimes, God did for us in removing our sins once and for all. So he continues to care for us. He gives us our daily bread even without our asking. But today, considering how frail we are and how out of control our world is, isn't it a singular privilege, a real blessing, to be able to conclude with David the Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And all God's people say, Amen.